Hi, and welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursdays, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited to bring to you this amazing brother today. He is a Black and Indian social entrepreneur, educator. He is just a really an all around great brother. Um, he's so much more than that. He's a husband, a dad, he's, he's lots and lots of things. So please welcome Mr. Shane Nelson. Hi, Shane. Hey, hey, Val. Oh, How man. are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Um, I'm not a dad. Um, uh, luckily, uh, I, I'm an uncle though. Uncle to many nieces and nephews. There you and if go. You, and if you yeah. saw me with my little sister though, you'd be like, that's his kid. Cause my sister's 11. So, and I've always Got had it. that. Got it. <laughs> had that feel, you had a dad feeling. For some reason or another, I thought in my head, I had a memory of you. Oh, you know, it might've been your cat. A memory <laughs> of you with something small. So. <laughs> Oh, um, the, I'm very, I'm very nurturing, and I'll, I'll yeah. break down like how that's that's in my masculinity as well. Yeah. But um, I definitely um, give off dad vibes. I, I can see that. Yes, that is so, so much. Thank you. It's all good. I'm so glad that you are here because, as you know, we're building a repository of six questions and 100 answers from 100 different Black men with the goal of having a young king who may or may not have um, strong Black positive role models in his life could come to this repository, see these questions and answers, and perhaps find himself there um, and guidance there. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or maybe even Black, to also look into this um, amazing body of men um, who represent a group of people who, in my estimation, have been maligned, whose narrative have been poorly and um, narrowly told, um, and who, for many people, go unnoticed or go um, who are invisible because they don't know that there are people like you out there. I want to shed a light on that. And so I'm so glad that you are here. And we're going to get started with the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Mm. Manhood to me, I like to picture it as a really well-kept forest. So there's some flowers, there's a softness to it, there are tall trees, so there's a history, there's stability to it. But ultimately, manhood is about nurturing, manhood is about uplifting, um, building, and it has this really amazing, at least in my view and how I perform right, my manhood, um, this, this push and pull with being super nurturing, but knowing when to step up, right? So I could simultaneously cook a really nice meal, right? Use, use those homemaker skills, but I also know my way around Home Depot. Like during the pandemic, I learned how to build my kitchen. So it's a, it's a mix, right? Manhood is this forest where there's a soft and a hard, there's an in-between. And it's really around just like nurturing, providing protection as well. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. Who and or what is important to you? So who, so who's important to me? So my wife is important to me. My siblings are important to me. My mother and father are important to me. Uh, my whole chosen family, because I have a very vast chosen family, they're important to me. And ultimately, um, my community. My community is a very, like, kind of broad strokes definition, right? So it's not only the Black community, it's not only the Asian community, it's, it's everyone that comes into my life that, you know, sees me in, in some way, they see my light, and I'm able to actually reflect theirs. Um, so they're important to me. Um, and then the things that are important to me, right, are simply this, equity that builds into hopefully abolition, right? So equity can look like making sure everyone has the resources that they need that meet them exactly where they are, right? So it has that balance in mind. It has all of those key elements and core components of creating change, but you don't stop there, right? You, you look at that and say, okay, can we end this system that we're playing into? And that's, that's what's most important to me, right? Can we get everyone to the table, take all of their diverse perspectives, include them in the conversation, create this equitable balance, but then move the needle and say, all right, you know what? This system isn't serving us or this mode that we've been doing things, this way of working, um, you know, it doesn't serve us. So can we eliminate it? And can we imagine something greater? Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's really wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Jane, how do you want us to see you? Mm, I want to be seen as a, a body of light, right? I want to, and I pray about this every day. I want to cultivate hope and joy and I want to radiate hope and joy. So when I am seen, I want to be seen for all of the joy that I can bring, not as a way to entertain, but to create peace, right? Um, amongst all of the chaos that we've witnessed over the last couple of years, right? Joy has been that radical resistance that I practice in my home, practice for my students, practice in my business, and practice out in the community. So I want to be seen as, <laughs> as this body of light or as joy, um, ultimately. It's really fantastic. That's yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Shane, what is your epic dream? Mm, my epic dream is to live in a world where we are at peace. And that, that's pretty generic and that's pretty basic, but um, the peace of making sure that our trans siblings get to live and be, be free. The peace of folks coming from all around the world and immigrating into spaces but they have their education from their country acknowledged. So um, making sure that they are able to just translate into different places and spaces like anyone else would. A piece where any space or any tool or anything that is designed gets at the core human components and have those necessary accommodations for folks coming from different ability levels. So it's a piece that meets everyone within their you know, own unique intersections and creates a very nice holistic environment that's not quite a utopia um but it's peaceful because it was built with that individual in mind that's my epic dream that's beautiful that is absolutely beautiful thank, thank you. you thank you oh my goodness okay so shane nelson who are you mm. i am a black and indian cisgender male who really enjoys anime and cartoons, who really loves cooking, loves taking care of his cats, even though they're annoying. And I am also someone who carries two degrees. I run a business. I'm out here volunteering and providing my time. I'm a board member. I'm an executive. I'm an educator. Um, and ultimately, that all goes into I'm, I'm Babe. Someone calls me Babe, and I love them very much. Um, I'm a big brother in multiple contexts. Um, I'm a, I'm an uncle. Um, and ultimately I'm Shane. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so glad of all of those identities. That's excellent. Excellent. Shane. <laughs> so here already at question six, which is, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, or you wanted me to ask you and I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? Hmm. I think, I think I would have loved to talk about the, the journey that was 2020. Um, and so for me, um, if we look at it right for month by month, January had an, all of this amazing growth where I was getting, you know, calls from former institutions that I had worked for or volunteered at saying, hey, come by. We, we know you're wearing your business owner hat now come do some speaking, come do some facilitation for us. February, we're traveling, we're having all of this amazing, you know, work being done across campuses. The things that I would get so upset about in the classroom say, why aren't we doing this? And I was out here doing the work. March rolls around. I'm speaking at a an international conference on why we need better lenses of equity within graduate school education in a higher education context. And then the world stops. I turn inward like I usually do when things get all crazy. And I looked at my partner and she said, well, we ain't got a kitchen. So you can worry about what's on the news if you want to, but you got to find a place to eat. And so I learned how to build things. And I learned how to build new pieces of myself and find new strength. From April, May, June to July, I had to leverage that new strength as we weathered a very, very dark storm of just hate bigotry, all of, all of the negativity um, concentrated on Black bodies, um, seen and unseen, right? Heard and unheard. And then as we got into um, August towards the rest of the year, 
seeing that that pivot, right? We always say pivot for 2020 and seeing that pivot now having the tools and the offerings necessary to bring organizations to the table to create change. So I went from someone who, who just spoke about it to somebody who facilitated a little bit about it, um, to someone who was hurt, to someone who healed and then brings healing to others. Um, and that was, that was my 2020. Wow. Wow. You know, there are so many lessons there, right? One of the things I'm learning is the fact that we all have the same amount of time, right? That we're all given the same amount of time and what we do with our time. And what you just shared with us is so powerful and it's a wonderful lesson. And I'm so grateful that you just shared it. Thank you so much. And I, you know, we met during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So fortunate, my great fortune to have met you during a, a, a panel, a Zoom panel discussion about entrepreneurship. Being in our little boxes. In it our little great. boxes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so grateful um, that, that we are now in community with each other. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of the work that you do. I'm grateful for the work that you do. And I honor you, my king. <laughs> Wow. I received it. Thank you. Thank you. And I think God will can continue to grow and deepen you and that your skills will continue to blossom. And as you're faced with any crises, because this is life and they come, that you will re, um, rely on and remember the resilience that you had in mm-hmm. 20 and use that as fuel to, to further you. So thank you so much, Shane, for, for being yeah. here. Val, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. Thank you for the community and the collective and the coalition building, because that's what we need the most. The second I saw the email, I was like, what you need? All right, we there. <laughs> you could have said, yo, meet me at the top of like the Empire State Building. I would have caught that boat bus. We there. It's all good. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. And it, yeah, like there's just so much more to come. I'm so grateful for that. But don't go anywhere because I want to okay. thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you were as um, enlightened and uplifted and inspired as I am um, and I was during this interview. And if there is a king, a positive king in your life who you want to see highlighted in this forum, please feel free to click the link below um, or in my bio or even DM me and we'll take it from there. But in the meantime, please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thank you so much. And thanks so much, Shane. That was really awesome. Fantastic. All right, (laughs) y'all.